Hi there. In this presentation series, we are going to review the digestive system, gastrointestinal tract, GI tract, also known as alimentary tract, and of course the related frequently encountered major disorders. Before we start this presentation series, let me share a personal story. Someone in my family recently found blood in the stool. So he went to the urgent care and they did some sample blood test, a sample stool test and he was recommended to see the GI specialist. He did follow up with the GI specialist and uh, they did the colonoscopy and the biopsy and finally he was diagnosed with ulcerative colitis. Now when I say ulcerative colitis, those of you who may not have the medical background, uh, familiarity with the anatomy and physiology may not understand what is ulcerative colitis. So I thought that let me put this presentation together because in order to understand the ulcerative colitis, we need to look at the GI tract from mouth to the anus, uh, what happens in the colon, ulcer plus inflammation of colon, ulcerative colitis. To better correlate and understand the big picture, I did a lot of reading and research and I thought, you know what, our home office technical underwriters are out there, probably they can take a couple of nuggets they are life underwriters, they are committed to lifelong education, continuous education. So probably this will help them out. You may be our field partners, agents or brokers. As you converse with the potential or the existing customers who may be approaching you first time or for the additional coverage. And in case if they happen to talk about any of the GI related disorders, you can have a better conversation, meaningful conversation. You can better ask the appropriate follow up questions, right? And or you may be the ultimate customer. And if so, we are all human beings. God forbid something happens to you or someone in your family. Having some understanding about the basic anatomy and physiology can help us ask the appropriate questions to the doctors or the GI specialist, right? So with that, because it happened in my family, I thought let me put down all this together to help you out all. And that's the background. So with that being said, let's start with the digestive system, GI tract, gastrointestinal tract, and the major disorders that we frequently encounter. And I will try to deviate as far as possible from getting too much into the technicalities and or the uh, medical jargon because I understand that not all of you bring the uh, background of anatomy and physiology, right? So that our field partners as well as the ultimate customers can also understand what we are talking here, okay? So let's move on. The digestive system, GI tract, and major disorders. So what do you think? What happens? The digestion process starts after we put the food in our mouth, whether it be apple that you eat a day, that doctors had, right? Actually, it starts beyond that. When we are hungry, and we smell the food, we see the food, then God has created a beautiful uh, features in our body that we have a parotid gland, sublingual gland, submandibular gland. These are all the saliva, the salivary glands that secretes the saliva or the juice or the enzyme. Right? And as we start to eat, the process starts and there is a teamwork like in our insurance industry we have agents, brokers, customers, underwriters, claims, 
actually they will work together. So God has created such a system in our body that the tongue, the tooth, the salivary glands, they all work together, oral cavity, pharynx, tongue, they all play a role. And the process continues. I'm just, just giving an overview of, at this point, the names of, so that you can better connect as we move forward in this presentation series, the names of the major organs. So we go down this uh, uh, tube is called esophagus. You have a diaphragm here, right below the esophagus. You have a, a liver, underneath the liver, you see the gallbladder. Then we have a, a stomach on this side. Uh, underneath there is a pancreas. There are various ducts, pancreatic duct, common pile duct, left duct, right hepatic duct. Uh, the, some of the organs are not listed here, but as we move forward in the presentation series, uh, you will better understand those and I will have a different slides to highlight on some of those aspects. Then you have a small intestine, the large intestine, a rectum and the anal. Uh, that's how the process of the GI tract is. Just to name the top major organs here. Okay. So let's take a look at one by one all of these. So the parotid gland, the submandibular gland and the sublingual gland, they secrete the saliva or the juice uh, that helps in the process of breaking down the food that tooth and tongue work together. It goes through the throat that we commonly call, is called a pharynx. Uh, that's about five inch long. And uh, the beauty, like, we are in the middle of the Thanksgiving weekend and we see when we drive there is a red light, there is a green light, right? There is a built-in mechanism or the traffic control right here because what happens, we have a common passageway where there is a passage for uh, to connect the nose to the trachea or simply speaking the windpipe and likewise you have the food also traveling from oral cavity to the long tube that I just showed you in the previous slide called esophagus. So God has created a mechanism of red light or the green light which is called epiglottis. That's a flap of tissue that makes sure that when one goes the other sucks another way around so that food cannot enter and become lost there. Okay. So that's how the food goes down. And this is a picture of epiglottis. So that does that to make sure that the common passageway is properly taken care of. So let's talk about the esophagus. The esophagus is the tube that I have just shown to you. That's, that's the tube, that's about 9 to 10 inch long and that goes from pharynx to the stomach. So there is a process that happens here and food is propelled through rhythmic contraction. Okay? And it, that the medical term for that is peristalsis. So it's a rhythm like contraction that happens and food goes further down for the proper digestion and ultimately turns into what we want, the nutrients in our body. So food passes from the esophagus to the stomach. Okay. Seeing is believing. It brings better clarity, the conceptual understanding about what we are talking. So this is your esophagus. There is an esophageal sphincter. sphincter. Okay. That's the one that connects the esophagus and the stomach. So the uh, sphincter is like a, a, a ring, like a valve, uh, that connects the esophagus to the stomach. And in the stomach you have the uh, different things that we will talk soon. At the end you have the pyloric sphincter. 
So the stomach at the top starts with the esophageal sphincter and at the bottom it, the stomach ends with the pyloric sphincter. And this is your esophagus. Okay. So now let's take a close look at the stomach. So the food that goes through the turns into the semi-solid, semi-liquid food with the saliva, the teamwork of the tongue and the tooth and the salivary glands through the esophagus it comes here and the walls are such of the stomach that food will bounce and it will as soon as it comes down through the esophagus it will go into the stomach in stomach it goes right into the cardia different portion of the stomach are labeled medically speaking different given different names the superior portion is fundus and you have a rugae rugae are the lining on the stomach actually that is where underneath the the enzymes are secreted the hydrochloric acid is released uh, that helps the digestion process but you need to strike the balance otherwise it could burn the and we will get into the disorders later so I don't want to go into that detail at this point then of course you have the body of the stomach and as I said at the end you have a uh, pyloric sphincter so these are the different names given to the different parts of the stomach so what stomach does stomach controls the passing of the foods into the first part of the small intestine as it goes beyond the stomach so that it only proceeds when the food is chemically ready in the small amounts. So let's take a picture here. So we eat from mouth through esophagus into the stomach. The stomach process continues and then it goes into the small intestine. So the small intestine um, we have a duodenum, jejunum and ileum. You may not be familiar with these names, but this is basically the small intestine. And the large intestine is the one in the green. You have the, the food from esophagus to stomach, from stomach to you have a cardiac or sphincter or esophageal sphincter, pyloric sphincter. From there it goes into the duodenum, from duodenum it goes to the jejunum, ileum and then um, it goes through, the process continues into the colon or the big, big, big intestine, large intestine, right? And you have a ascending colon, a transverse colon, a descending colon, rectum and finally the anus where the leftover is released in the form of stools or the feces. So, what happens in the entire intestine, the small bowels? There are tiny microscopic projections. They are called villus, singular or the plural they are called villi, villi and those are the tiny capillaries through which the food is absorbed, nutrients are absorbed and then there is a lymphatic vessels as well as the blood vessels that works and the, these tiny capillaries really helps in converting the nutrients getting through the blood vessels and the process continues. So these are the tiny projections if, if we take a, a, a look at the picture these are the tiny projections of villi where the blood vessel and the lymphatic vessels interactions take place after the food is converted into the nutrients. 
So likewise the process continues, we have the large intestine that extends from the end of the ilium, that is the end portion of the small intestine. And the process continues and it ends at the anus. So the large intestine is divided into the four parts, the, the second, the colon, the sigmoid colon and the rectum. Um, second is about is the first part it, it's like a pouch and I'll show you in the the different slide is a pouch on the right side that is connected to the ilium by what is called iliosacral valve or the sphincter and the appendix is hanging right there it has no clear function but it can create a problem if it gets infected or inflamed okay so the, the colon is about 5 feet long and it has 3 divisions. The ascending colon that I just told you extends from second to the undersurface of the liver where it turns to the left to become the transverse colon and again then it horizontally go 